Narcissism and Demonic Possession on today's episode of Obleron Spirituality. Greetings, soul family. I am Obleron, the Lord of Love and the Magister of the Cube. Thank you for joining me on today's episode, where we are going to talk about how narcissists are possessed by all the prime evils. Now, I know narcissism has become a huge buzzword as of late, and I know that there are a lot of videos from a psychologist and a psychiatrist perspective, and this video is intended to talk about narcissism from a spiritual perspective. Now, it's not meant to replace psychological literature or the work of science. It is merely to serve as a complement and to also approach narcissism from a different perspective. Now, a lot of narcissists are either a psychopathic narcissist, which means they were born that way, or a sociopathic narcissist, were, which means that, you know, they were created. And when I watch a lot of psychological videos on the subject of narcissism, I notice that they tend to also align with demonic possession and the prime evils. So when it comes to narcissism, a narcissist is a person who's entire chakra system is possessed by demonic energy. And despite all of it, it's very important to remember that we are all God's children and we are all put on this planet for a specific reason. Even if that reason is to, you know, teach other people how to not be, unfortunately. If you haven't caught the video already, take a look at my previous video, Seven Demons That Possess the Seven Chakras. And there I go into a lot of detail about which demons possess which chakras and how to remedy those situations. Okay, so a narcissist crown chakra is possessed by Lucifer, who represents the sin of pride. Now, normally the crown chakra is about expansion and recognizing the creator. In a narcissist world, there is no one better than them. They are the end-all, be-all to existence. And it means that your place will always be beneath them. You will never be on an equal footing with them. And I've seen several videos where, where people have said this same thing. Their power structure is a vertical power structure. It's not a horizontal power structure where we are all created equal. It's not it's not a structure in which you know we can we can actually relate to one another. It is a structure where they're at the top and you are at the bottom. And so they will never be connected to all that is. And it's very unfortunate because as they grow older, they become very miserable people because they are getting closer to death. And from their perspective, there is nothing beyond death. Once they end, existence ends from, from their perspective. So the third eye chakra, which normally helps us to understand cosmic law, is now possessed by Satan, who rules over the sin of wrath. So a narcissist, despite whatever exterior they may, they may have, they're always angry. And if you've ever triggered a narcissist to the point to where they go into a narcissistic rage, you will know exactly how much anger a narcissist has. And of course, you know, they will always make you feel like it was your fault. And if anyone knows the literature on Satan, he was sort of the great trickster in that he had the ability to make people doubt themselves. He had the ability to, to, to twist the truth around and to make people essentially question their beliefs. And this is very much how a narcissist acts as well. They are very good at gaslighting. They are very good at making you doubt yourself. And all of this knowledge that, that they do take in, it's not, it's not to create a beneficial understanding for everyone. It is to, to be manipulative. And so a narcissist will always gaslight you. They will always manipulate you. They will always try to use their brain power to figure out what your weaknesses are and how to exploit you. The throat chakra, which normally allows us to communicate and express our feelings to others, is now possessed by the demon Belphegor, who rules over the sin of sloth. 
The sin of sloth is when we are not effective communicators. And so what generally happens from the narcissist perspective is they have a tendency to run their mouth without any regard to social cues or without any regard to being actually genuinely interested in what other people have to say. They are constantly talking from their perspective. They are constantly talking about themselves. And even if you do try and get a word in, they will probably invalidate you in some way to keep on talking about themselves. Okay, when it comes to the heart chakra, a narcissist is possessed by the demon Leviathan which also is represented by the sin of envy. And a narcissist, again, if we combine it with the sin of pride, a narcissist is the best thing to exist since creation was created. And if, let's say, you are more skilled or more adept than a narcissist, they will never acknowledge it and they will always be envious of what you can do. They will always have that jealousy. Because their envy is so great, they will always belittle your accomplishments too. Because again, no one is better than the narcissist in the narcissist world. The solar plexus chakra, which normally allows us to feel empathy for others, is now possessed by the demon Beelzebub, who rules over the sin of gluttony. Narcissists have a lot of eccentric food habits, either at the dinner table or when it comes to when it comes to actually serving food. They will use food as a means of control, and they may also serve rotten or expired food as well. Again, many of these tactics that they use with food are all about control, and it's all about getting people to submit to them as well. The sacral chakra, which normally allows us to express our joy for life, has now become possessed by the demon Asmodeus, who rules over lust. Many narcissists use their sexuality to manipulate others. Narcissists are essentially people collectors. They like to collect people and they collect them as, as things and as objects, not necessarily because they are interested in creating genuine connections or, or friendships or whatnot. A deeper meaning of lust, I think, is also an energetic craving. It is craving what you don't have. So it doesn't always need to necessarily be sexual in nature. It can also just be something which you don't have, that you covet as well. And narcissists are very, are very prone to this. The root chakra, which normally allows us to understand our connection, not only to the earth, but also to those around us, has now become possessed by the demon Mammon, who rules over the sin of greed. One of the worst things that can happen is for a narcissist to have a lot of money. And unfortunately, in our modern society, a lot of narcissists do have a lot of money. Because it's, it's actually been studied that many people who rise to the top of the corporate ladder are actually have a fair amount of psychopathic and sociopathic tendencies, which play right into the personality disorder of narcissism. When a narcissist has money, it is never enough. They are always greedy. And the only time they will ever spend money on people is to manipulate and to control them. It's never given from the heart. And uh, there are pretty much no limits to how greedy a narcissist can be. They could have millions of dollars in the bank. They could be multimillionaires several times over, and it will never be enough. It, they will always use the money to control. And they also have no problem creating their wealth by any means necessary, which can either be, let's say, marrying a person that they don't love just to get their money, or, or perhaps being a very shady business owner in order to get whatever money that they want. So again, it's very important to realize that even though we could have compassion for a narcissist, 
they will still take advantage of you if they can. What most people say is to just cut communication or have as little communication with them as possible. And there's there's really nothing that that we can do as people to to help to help them otherwise because when you are possessed by all the prime evils, you know, you're talking cosmic forces that have existed long before humans have existed. And so you can't just shake a narcissist out of their narcissism. You know, man, many psychologists would say it's virtually impossible to to break a narcissist of their habits because whatever they've gone through or however they were born, their brain is just rewired differently. It's just like trying to relate to a poisonous snake. Yeah, that, that snake may, may have been created by the creator, but that snake will still bite you and kill you if, if you let them, if you're not careful. You know, just, just understand this when, when interacting with narcissists. I know it's very hard, especially if, if they're your parents or if, you know, they, they are one of your loved ones or perhaps a spouse or, or someone like that, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. But at the same time, you know, there, there's there's very little that you can do as a person to, to ever change them. Okay, thank you, Soul Family, for joining me on today's episode. If you resonate with this or if you have anything to add, please leave a comment below. I would love to hear from you. So stay positive out there. Stay aware. Don't let the narcissist get you down. And much love and blessings. I love you all. And now we shall close with the chant of Obleron. Um day, so day. Aum Dei Obleron, Aum Dei Sotei, Aum Dei Obleron.